Hey guys, this is Zrave, and I'm here to show you the new farming route I've been doing. It's uh, getting five stacks and killing Saidea and Asmodon. I like this route a lot, first of all because after the nerf to Tyrael, there's no reason to continue doing the Siege Breaker. And second, you get to kill two bosses that drop extra loot with five stacks. So first I'm going to start over on the second heart quest of the Heart of Sin. And I actually go outside Welcome and get uh, to start getting my stacks because there's not enough on, on my way to Saidea. So like I usually do, I'm going to get the Bridge of Corsic here. Still recharging. So this run takes me about 30 minutes, sometimes longer if I'm having trouble finding packs. But it's you get to kill two bosses, so it's uh, it's really good. And uh, this video will also double up as a, a boss guide for both Saidea and Asmodan. They're, they're relatively easy. But it's nice to have some, like for anyone that's having trouble, it's nice to have a video showing you how to do it. Health return. So these poison guys actually bug out pretty frequently and don't get a, the rest of the, of the pack. It's pretty convenient. I haven't been able to determine what causes that. I've noticed that they, they can have a combination of affixes, so I think it's just the base unit. It's not... Yes, something with this unit specifically is bugging out. That's convenient for me. I just want to get my stacks as quickly as possible and he's still going to drop full loot, so... Whenever you can, try to kill these. Need more time. In order to do this run, you're going to need quite a bit of gear. It's uh, ever, ever since they nerfed Tyrael, like Act 3 is suddenly a huge challenge. You have to start doing your own DPS, which means that you have to sacrifice your tankiness. Um, I'll show you my stats as soon as I kill this guy. So right now with the Warcry up and the Enchantress, I'm at 11.6k armor. And I have 1250 physical resist and fire resist, which are the two most important ones. I realize like you guys are probably not, not even near this, but um, you can do it with less, but not too much less. It's just that hard. DPS is also very important. I recommend at least 15k. If you don't, you're going to start running into enraged timers on, on range packs. So to find the caves here, I actually look at the map, locate the trebuchets, and I check the spots where they're... that are still open. Okay, so it could have been here, but it's not there. Need more time. And here we go. Need more time. But yeah, guys, the the gear requirement for farming this solo has gone up a lot. You, um, if if you were following my. The, kind of gearing that I did from a million gold challenge. You're going to have to stay in Act 2 for a while, try to get some better pieces. I have a video showing uh, my current gear. Actually, it, it's off by a, by a piece or two. I might make another update to that soon. Ready yet. Need more 
time. been hit. Still recharging. Pretty challenging pack. I hate invulnerable minions just because it takes so much longer to kill everything. But it's actually not as big a deal now as it was before, relatively, because the biggest problem with invulnerable minions before was that Tyrael would attack the guys that are immune and then you couldn't do anything. But, I mean, if this pack wasn't a guy that keeps bearing and doesn't allow me to attack him, then it wouldn't have been so bad. So even though the the minions are immune, they still trigger revenge, which is, I mean, would be mandatory. If I couldn't do that, then I'd not be able to kill this pack. Still recharging. I've been healed. Not ready yet. This is probably a, a pack you would want to skip. I just want to get my stacks as quickly as I can to make a shorter video. And uh, sometimes it wastes like four or five minutes in between fi even finding a pack, so I'm not going to give up on this one. Still recharging. Not ready yet. Oh, actually, an important detail I forgot to mention at the start of the video, guys. I, I tried running with the Berserker Rage, but I'm back to using Superstition now. I just find that having that... It's it's damage on the ground that kills me. It's not melee attacks. So I decided to bring it back. Someone suggested that I try dropping one of the armor things instead, but I, I did the math on it, and I would lose 15% against all damage if I did that. So it's... Almost as bad as dropping superstition, and I'm suddenly squishy in melee as well. It uh, didn't seem good, so I brought everything back, and I'm actually like actively switching even more pieces of my gear to DPS, and hopefully that will let me uh, clear things fast enough. I have so much resist and, and armor, like you saw, that um, actually vitality is my most needed stat right now. I only have a uh, 55k health, so it's um. Adding vitality right now is is so good for me. I, I used uh, Drakey's equivalent health uh, calculator, and 
actually adding vitality is one to one with resists in terms of increasing my tankiness right now, which is amazing. I have some plans on how to do it. And when I do that, I'm going to try to add like 200 more vitality without sacrificing anything else. And once I do that, then I'll, I'll try to drop either Superstition or one of the armor things again and see if I can make Berserker Rage work. I just want to have that bigger damage, right? Kill stuff faster, farm faster, and much better. Okay, so I'm at three stacks. Ordinarily, I would stop now and go for the cave where, where uh, Saidea is, but... I want to get the chest that's going to be on the second floor here, so I'm going to continue a bit. That just means I'll probably sp skip a pack or two once I get to the tower itself. I saw another pack up here. I'm going to be cocky and pull two at once. Just see what happens. I also really like fighting packs that have mortar. It seems like they waste most of their time just casting that, and it's not even uh, hitting me, right? So it makes packs much easier. It works for everything, especially like getting ranged guys that have this, because then they stand there and cast the whole chain of mortars instead of just kiting around. Need more time.
Controlling the Soul Stone is so difficult, Thalia. I really must do something. No, this is no different from when your sisters were training, and you had to stand aside until they learned. Well, I may have bolstered their spells. Just a little. Alright, so I got my five stacks. Gonna just sell real quick, and uh, I'll go hit Sidea and Asmodon. I've got some new items. We can't all be warriors. Someone needs to sell the equipment. Still recharging. Going down into the crater itself. As the ship, you're going down into the crater itself. Would you like some? So she's two levels beneath me, but these levels are predictable and relatively short, so you shouldn't have too much trouble just running through stuff. Um, but it's it's nice to know that you can do that, because if you can't and you try to do it, you might create a, like a whole block of monsters somewhere that you can't get through, and you suddenly can't kill either. So be careful about that. I'm pretty comfortable with my gear and stuff. I'm not worried about... I mean, even if I make a block of stuff, I can probably just kill it. So ordinarily I would kill those guys for the loot, but I'm just going to go for the boss make the video a bit shorter. I'll, I'll take any easy elite packs. I messed that up. Alright, so now for the first of the bosses in this run, Saidea, she's really easy. A bit annoying because she tends to, like, jump up and disappear for a bit. But the spiders, I find, are not really challenging at all. So, it's just a waste of time. Oh, yeah. I've been looking forward to It might be a barbarian thing, just because we can revenge off of several tiny ads and it doesn't cause us any problems. And I thought we were friends. But yeah, as you can see, this fight's so easy, it's actually boring. 
barely taking damage. She just runs around and tries to waste time. Asmodine has a few more mechanics and then it's a bit more interesting. But he's also pretty doable, I think. We'll get to him uh, very soon. So if you're having trouble with the little spiders, you can actually probably kite them a bit and use Furious Charge to heal back up. I, I really don't know if that's a problem that people in lower levels of, of gear have. But... Yeah, maybe maybe I should come back here sometime and do this fight with like a bunch of pieces miss missing. If, uh, if you're having trouble, let me know, basically. Though I, I really think that if you're having trouble with her, you would have a lot more trouble getting here, so... It's probably not an issue. Yeah, so as you can see, this um, the start of the run is pretty much the same as Siege Breaker, but then it takes me about three minutes to reach her, just because I have to go through two levels. And uh, after her, it's another one minute run, and you're at Osmodon. So you get two bosses for the price of one. It's uh, really good. I do, don't recommend you do the Siege Breaker first, and then come here, because there's like six or seven levels in between the two and it's really annoying especially if you get a hard pack and you have to fight your way through so uh, I recommend starting on that quest and just killing these two and doing it again if you want to farm more this is where Asmodan's evil thrives and festers not for long so the nice thing about this level is that from the start you know exactly where you need to go and uh, actually I think it might be the same level every time so Still recharging. Wow. Elite Golgoras. These are one of the packs that I avoid. I don't like killing them. The constant knockbacks and the hit so hard. I, I fought one the other day that was fast and invulnerable minions, so... <laughs> no thanks. These scorpions are really easy. They don't hit very hard and Need more time. definitely a mob you should look out for and try to kill it. Oh come on man. They're walling me in and I, I try to leap and it didn't work. I'm, I may just have to kill these. Alright, there we go. So Asmodan, first thing about him, he's going to cast a fireball that homes in on you. I tend to just tank him with a, using a cooldown each time. But another strategy you can take is if you bring the boss to one of the chains or the fireball, we'll get blocked by it. So I'll do that once so you guys see what it's about. Just in case you're having trouble, it might help uh, range classes or squish your characters a lot more. Okay, so there's a fireball coming over there. 
Uh, this actually might be too far to reach it. I'm gonna bring the boss closer first. Alright, so the fireball hits the chain and protects you. So if you get the boss close to the chain, you can actually just loop around in the circle. And uh, it will hit at the chain every time. But I want to just DPS the boss the maximum amount, so I'm popping cooldowns each time. And uh, max deeps on it. So the other ability he has is that rain of, I don't know, body parts or something. It does quite a bit of damage, but it's easy to avoid. Just like um, the boss is wide enough that you can jump to the other side, say, and then fight him from over there. Usually you can find a spot where you can DPS the boss outside of the thing. He also summons some adds. Right now if you look in the minimap in the bottom left corner, there's a... Uh, a little marker that that's summoning ads it's uh i don't care about them at all because they're uh, they're really weak the thing dies on its own and the ads actually like heal me with revenge so i just ignore the mechanic you can easily take a break and go kill it if it's causing you problems okay and this uh stuff on the ground here uh does quite a bit of damage you should kite around the the outer edge of the room and um, he does that at 75, 50, and 25%, so you can kind of prepare for it. Alright. So that's that's the entire fight. Not too hard. Just got to be a, a bit careful. Uh, this thing here that he's doing actually that doesn't hit me in melee range, it seems, so... I don't even know if it hits very hard. Time to avoid this thing again. You gotta be a bit careful when you do this because you don't want to get cornered in in a spot where you can't uh, get away without running through one of these because they actually hit pretty hard. Like I'm taking 900 a tick so that's like 2000 DPS or so. If uh, with a bit less gear it, it could hurt, kill you pretty fast. So I killed that thing there just to show you that it drops the health globe, pop me back up to full so that if you're if you're not topped and you're in danger, go find one of those things to kill and get the, the health globe from it. So we have one more of those uh, puddles, and then the fight's over. Alright, yeah, so when he, he says the power of hell will consume you, that's when he does the, the puddles. It's probably safe to just start kiting then. If you get stuck in a puddle like that, just leap, charge. So they're about to disappear, so I'm just going to pop Ignore Pain and tank them. So I had to adjust my positioning there to get inside of the range of the beam. I was hitting him from like almost max range, so... And that's Asmodon, guys. Pretty easy fight. If you have any issues with this or any other fight in the game, just uh, let me know. And I'll make a video about it. So last thing, I'm going to show you guys the loot I got. Hopefully there's something good. I've been doing this for a while, but... Yeah, it's, um, it's rough getting gear that actually sells nowadays. You need to roll like four good stats or something.
So that amulet might actually sell just because it has the life on hit 500. It's a pretty good spot to get life on hit. And this will sell as well. Okay, well, I'm really happy about this run. I don't think uh, this will sell. Ah, I'm even happier now. I got got a bunch of stuff to sell, guys. All right, but that's it. Thanks for watching, and uh, just. Uh, drop some feedback on my channel.